Hey, how you going? This is Ian Harris from Australia, and today we are going to paint a sundowner for beginners. I'm going to call it a sundowner anyway. It's got some pretty basic colours in there, and so let's get this started. All right, we'll put this on the easel, and we'll get into the colours and brushes that we're going to use, okay? All right, we used ochre yellow, I used titanium white, ultramarine blue, I used just a primary red and a mid yellow. I also had my little sponge that I use for the sun, retarder. I used a long knife, my small flat head brush, my hog bristle fan brush, and a two inch blending brush. I wanna start off with painting the canvas board white. Now I've just got some white on my palette here with some retarder, okay? And what this is gonna do, it's gonna give our board when it's primed right, a nice flowing blendable surface for the other acrylic colors, okay? So let's get all this on. Okay, we got our board white. Now we are going to use the yellow ochre but first I want to clean my brush all right I got my yellow oxide on the palette I'm going to put some retarder with this one as well and I want to smash it onto my two inch brush so it's right in the right in the hairs there eh? look at that it's got right in there now I want to start from this corner and probably have it coming over this way. So we'll get this on. I hate these boards, eh? Look at that, they don't even hold properly. So I'm gonna just kind of put this where I want it on the canvas board. And then I'm gonna blend it, okay? I'm gonna just blend this into that white. If you could see what's happening here, the retarder has allowed that to stay damp for this oxide to be blended into it. That's why I love painting this way. Give your brush a bit of a stab every now and then as you're blending it because it's building up with paint on the um, end of the bristles there. Now I'm using my two inch brush here again and I'm softening these edges, that's what I'm looking for here. The picture I found, I'm referencing, it's not going to look exactly like the picture. Because for me, it's pretty hard to get it to look exact. So I'll use it as a reference and a guide for where the layouts of everything in the picture is going to be. So, I can have a bit of light over there. This is going to have water in it as well. See, some other brushes are good. You get real artistic sort of edges in the paint there like that. And you can grab your Mr. Blending brush and blend it in. And you get like a whole lot different aspect of how you're wanting to blend. Like I didn't want this to be too uniform coming this way, you know, like that. So I picked up my fan brush and blended, I dabbed on the paint with that, which gave it a different, a different look. I wanna get a bit more, maybe over here. And blend. Now I'm getting some red and mixing with that yellow oxide. I better get a bit more oxide in there, we're running out. Okay, now I'm mixing some red with this yellow oxide to darken it up a bit, okay? Just to give it a darker complexion than what that was there. I want it a bit darker than that. So you can mix all your tones on your boards there. 
different tones of the colour you're doing. Lay it next to what you've just done and you get an idea how dark it is. I've got my darker colour in here and I want it mainly darker over here. So I want it feathered out as I'm blending it. So I'm laying it on in kind of a feathery gradient way. See what I've done? I've sort of blobbed it on in a gradient way. I'm going to get my brush, my two inch one, and blend this into that yellow oxide. And this will gradually help me fade that into there, but not in such a big sudden blob. Okay. Blend that into there. Make it nice and dark. Put a nice sun up there. Bit at the top, keep the tops and corners dark. Bring your eye into the painting. It's a warm day here in Perth today. Quite warm. And I can feel that I'm going to be struggling with this heat. Oh, right up the top there, Ian. <clears throat> See, a lot of my style of painting is a, is a lot of blending. Now, I wouldn't mind that a little bit more darker so we'll get a bit of blue under the palette. Just get some of it on there and darken it up. Just little bits as you go. Let's come back up to the palette, to the... Um... Now I want this really dark here. Is this gonna be a different tone of dark? Now if this isn't dark enough, I'm gonna add more blue into that mix. Yeah, see, I want more. I want more in there. Get some of this, mix it into there. See, it's on the corner of my brush there. I don't want to overdo it. All right, now we'll get this being darker in the corner. Yeah, that's nice and dark. Blend it. See, so in hindsight, I've got three, don't know what it looks like on the camera, but there's three different colours blended in here. Want a nice dark along here. This is just for where I want the really dark spots. Okay, get your favourite cloud brush. Mine's the fan brush. I've got my white here. Pull some of it away and just stain it a little bit, just so it's not pure white, okay? I'm getting a bit of this yellow oxide in there and I'm just staining it, contaminating it, so to speak, okay? It'll pick up, because then this, this is still white, but this is going to highlight it. And we want to get some clouds in there. So I want something, let's say where these whites are. I'm just sliding and moving and pushing around and twisting as I go, making a weird looking look. And I want to blend that in to all those colors underneath, make it soft. And it's picking up the bottom colors to create the shadow and darkness in these clouds. Okay, now let's do another cloud. I want something about here. So watch. So many different ways to do clouds. And I suppose one thing you can do wrong is look at too many ways to do them. And when you want to do a cloud in your painting, you confuse with too many options. But if you can get over that, that's all right. 
So where do we want some more? Let's just say here, okay? I've got the fan brush and I'm just uh, 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 twisting around. See how it's making all beautiful different shapes that it's gonna, see, see how that just come up there like that? I did it all on its own, I didn't even plan that. But now, I've got to quickly blend it though, okay? Otherwise if it dries, you lose that effect you're looking for. So I want to blend the bottom of that down. Probably here. And like I said before in previous videos, you know when you've done a good cloud because it looks great. And if you're not happy with your cloud that you've done, well, you know it was a crappy shit cloud. Okay, I'm nearly finished these clouds. Now I'm just picking up the white paint on my fan brush and I'm going to highlight some of these. You might not pick it up on the camera just yet, but if I get in the mood to pull it closer to show you, then you'll know what I mean. And what I, what I can do is to put something in front of something. I might like put a whiter one in front of that and quickly throw that down and blend the bottom of that down into it. It's just given those clouds there a bit more depth and dimension. Now these are not realistic clouds. They're good for beginners. They, they represent a cloud in an art piece. You've done a painting. People are looking at your painting. And they're not seeing grass. They're not seeing a tree there. They know that that is clouds, okay? Now we're gonna put a sun here. Okay, I got myself a um, little round sponge on a stick. I got that from the art shop, so art shops do sell them. So now we've got our yellow down here. Where's our yellow? I've done nothing with it. I'm just stabbing it onto this sponge. I might get some water just to help it flow better. And I want it about here. So there it is there, but it's gonna be bigger than that. So I'm gonna use the, the circle of this, because it's got a round edge, to create the circle of my sun. If you, you can paint your sun on, do whatever you, whatever's easy for you, okay? So I'll get this reasonably round. Now to me, that's the size I want it, I think. Yeah, that's about the size I want it. See, this round sponge is good. I can create the edges of that sun. I could have cut out a template like I do for my moons, but this is all wet and I don't want to dry it to do that. Grab yourself a filbert, or not a filbert brush, a flat, I mean a round brush. Now, you got the white in the middle, blob it on in the middle. Don't even clean this brush. Oh, you can if there's a bit too much on it. I feel there is, right? And then just go around and around and around until you've run out of paint and you're blending it at the same time. You're smearing it in there. Back a bit behind some clouds, so we've got to get some of the darker color back where it was. Just do that bit and quickly blend that back. Otherwise, you're gonna lose your blending ability. Okay, I'm getting my white back onto the fan brush. I'm coming in front of here. And I want to blend that. Just in front of our sun there. Okay, I'm just putting those little highlighted peaks on top of these clouds here and there. Trying not to overdo it. All right, this is ready to um, put our bottom water in now. So I'm gonna get my hair dry and dry all this, okay? Okay, down here, I've got some more red and the yellow oxide. I've left a bit of red up there and we're gonna paint the water. So I'm getting some more of that blue and I wanna bring that. So I've got three sections of paint on my palette. Now, I've taped up my horizon line so as I don't have to be 
good with the um, line painting it on there. It's easy to tape it up for me. You don't have to tape it up. I just chose to tape it up. Now I'm using a fan brush just to get this on because I want to keep my blending brush for blending. So I've got the actual dark colour on there first. And we want to create the... where our sun is. I'm going to have to get some white into there. So we'll get some white on our brush. Our sun's there, so we're going to find our reflection on the water there. I'll blend that in. Which okay. Now what I want to do, just to finish it off, so it's not too much mucking around, and it's not too much problem for anybody, if you don't mind, I'll just to sharpen up the um, reflections here. I'll just get a bit of... Um, white on a knife and we'll intensify some ripples over the um, reflection area of the sun in the water but try to keep these straight eh? if you get them crooked your whole painting looks out of perspective it looks a bit crooked as well and it's like you lose that bullshit effect. Anyway, I'm going to take this tape off. All right, just finishing off with some lower horizon clouds, blending that in, and then I'll call this painting finished. I suppose you need a name for your painting. All right, we'll call this one finished, and. Um, We'll call this one Sundowner, okay? This is for all you beginners out there. Share, like, and subscribe to my channel. All the best. Goodbye, good luck, and good on you.